allow the opposition. I found myself exclaiming in righteous indignation at what I perceived as outrageous viewpoints pushed out through the media, social, and television lately. As I spouted my reactions, my dear friend suddenly interjected, Isn't this great? I was on the road to seeing things this way, but I hadn't gotten there yet. Well, at least people are getting involved in the conversations, I quipped. No, I mean, this is all great for self-inquiry, she clarified. It's really a mirror showing everyone their beliefs, their biases, and emotional triggers. And she's absolutely correct. These times are perfect for observing how we all fit into this matrix of duality. With all the opinions, value systems, and emotional responses, there couldn't be a better environment for practicing mindfulness. In these times of social distancing, I prefer to think about it as mental distancing, where we step back from our reactions and observe what those reactions are telling us about ourselves. This is the value of opposition. When you feel attacked, observe how you feel about that and how it is hardwired into your experiences and definitions of who you believe yourself to be. If you're inspired by a particular way of seeing things, observe that as well. The simple act of stepping back allows us the opportunity to stop taking things personally, forgive a perceived transgression, and return to a state of allowance and appreciation for the sheer expanse of human experience. We are all in the process of becoming. How one person gets there is certainly not how you may be getting there, so remaining free of judgment is key. By maintaining a posture of equipoise, we automatically harmonize chaotic energies allowing for unconscious patterns to emerge into the light of consciousness. I was on a Zoom call with some associates and one of them made the observation that what we call the quote cabal or the quote deep state has been one of the most successful operations for waking people up in all of human history. The darkness allows us to see where the light is. And although we may rail against what the darkness is doing, it is vital to realize that the darkness is doing what darkness does. It is in its nature to serve itself, obscure its motives, and wage a campaign of control to avoid being revealed by the light. It's just doing its job. By allowing the opposition of the dark, it brings our own unconscious darkness into stark relief. And from that revelation, we are made free to consciously choose our path. We may feel stifled, oppressed, and victimized by these evil forces, but by allowing the evil to be what it is, we are freed from its control and have retrieved our power of choice. Those of us who have chosen to revel in the darkness are only a single choice away from entering the world of light and love. Even the darkest of us still have the light of consciousness that is who they basically are. Life for all of us in this matrix of master or slave, fear or love, light or dark, duality, is ultimately a test of choice. We choose to embrace the darkness or choose the light. Judging what is right or wrong prevents the allowance of the full spectrum of existence. Because we are all fundamentally light, by allowing the full spectrum, we embrace the chaos, bringing all things back into harmony. This is what we are here for. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com